Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing smooth muscle contraction. Okay, so at the moment what we've done is we've stimulated the smooth muscle cell with acetylcholine. That has stimulated M3 muscarinic receptors on the surface of the smooth muscle cell. Uh, the M3 um, muscarinic acetylcholine receptors are coupled to the heterotrimeric G protein GQ. Okay, and when acetylcholine binds to those M3 muscarinic acetylcholine receptors, uh, they become catalytically active and they're going to catalyze the conversion of the alpha Q subunit uh, from its off state where it's bound to GDP to its on state where it's bound to GTP. That alpha Q subunit bound to GTP is then going to activate the enzyme phospholipase C beta. And what we now want to see is what's the activity of phospholipase C beta. So I've said it's going to break down a component of the membrane known as PIP2. So let me talk about what PIP2 is then. Okay, so PIP2 is short for a rather long name, which is phosphatidyl, phosphat tidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate. Um, so phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate. So let me put this here. Bisphosphate. Right, okay, so the PI of PIP2 stands for phosphatidyl inositol, and then the P2 then stands for the fact that you've got two phosphate groups bound to that phosphatidyl inositol molecule. Alright, so in the previous video what I told you about was the structure of a phosphatidate molecule and here we have at the start of the name of this molecule we have this phosphatidyl. So let's try and now talk about what for the structure of PIP2 or phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate is. Well, basically, it's based on uh, the structure of phosphatidate. So, let's draw its structure down here. Okay, so if this is the phospholipid bilayer, again, the structure is the same as here. So, you have this phosphatidate molecule here. So, you have these uh, long-chain carboxylic acids, or these fatty acids, which make up these hydrophobic tails of the phosphatidate molecule. And then, you have the glycerol in orange, um, Two of the hydroxyl groups of glycerol are then esterified to these long-chain carboxylic acids. And the final third hydroxyl group is then bound to this phosphate group here. So that's the structure of our phosphatidate molecule. Right, so now we want phosphatidyl inositol. So basically, to get phosphatidyl inositol, what you do is you take this phosphate group here and you bind it to an inositol molecule. Now, inositol is a six-carbon ring. Okay, so six-membered carbon ring, where each of the carbons of this six-membered carbon ring has a hydroxyl group coming off it. Okay, so I'll highlight this in, whoops, blue. Okay, so this is the inositol ring here, in blue. And all of the bonds that are of the um, six-membered ring of inositol are single bonds. So these are all single bonds, basically. Now, that makes us phosphatidyl inositol. So you've got inositol with this phosphatidyl group coming off it. So let me highlight inositol in blue there. Right. Now, we want PIP2, however. We want phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate. So you need to add phosphate groups off to the on the fourth and the fifth carbon of inositol. So here's the fourth carbon. So I'll just talk a bit about how we label the carbons of inositol. This one over here, which is bound to this phosphate, phos well, to the phosphatidyl group, is uh, now deemed the first carbon. Then this one here is the second, third Fourth, so we stick off a phosphate group of our fourth here. And then the fifth one is over here. And then finally the sixth one over there. Now for the life of me, I do not know why this molecule is called phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate. To me, it would have been made more sense to call it phosphatidyl inositol 3,4-bisphosphate. But for some reason, they label that carbon with the second phosphate group of it, the fifth carbon of PIP2. So, this is the structure of PIP2 then. Here we go, PIP2, phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate. Now, uh, what does the uh, enzyme phospholipase C 
uh, of the beta type due to this uh, PIB2 molecule? Well, it's going to cleave one of the bonds. It's going to cleave this bond between, let me get a color to highlight this, it's going to cleave the bond between this phosphate group here and the glycerol molecule there. Okay, so PIP2 is a usual component of the phospholipid bilayer. So I hope uh, through this picture I've convinced you that PIP2 is basically just a phospholipid with this extra group stuck off its phosphate head. Okay, now when you activate phospholipase C beta, it's going to start breaking down this usual component into two molecules. And let's draw these two molecules out. So you're going to get this uh, glycerol molecule bound to two long chain carboxylic acids, like so. So here are long chain carboxylic acids in green, and here's our glycerol in orange here. Okay, all right. So the name for that, let me just move this up. The name for that is a diacyl glyceride because you have bound two acyl groups to glycerol and that's why it's a diacyl glyceride, okay? And diacyl glyceride is often abbreviated to DAG for short. Right, and then the other molecule you get is this inositol with three phosphate groups bound to it. So here's inositol, okay? like so, and here are the three phosphate groups off it. One, two, three. Okay, so let me cover that in as well. So here are, here's the inositol six-membered carbon ring. Okay, and here are the um, three phosphate groups in red here. Okay, now this molecule is known as inositol, inositol, uh, one, you've got this first phosphate group coming off the first carbon, and then you've got another phosphate coming off the fourth carbon, and then a final phosphate coming off what's called the fifth carbon. So this is inositol 1, 4, 5, trisphosphate. And you will often hear people just refer to it as inositol trisphosphate, or even more common, people would just refer to this as I for inositol, and then P for phosphate, and then free to denote that you've got free phosphate groups coming off it. So, overall, phospholipase C of the beta type, but in fact all phospholipase Cs do this, is going to uh, cleave this phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate molecule, which is a usual component of the phospholipid bilayer, into diacylglyceride and inositol 1,4,5-trisphosphate, or IP3. Now, both of these have downstream signaling pathways. Um, diacylglyceride is going to go on and activate protein kinase C. However, we're not interested in that part of this pathway. Instead, we are interested in this inositol 1,4,5-trisphosphate. Okay, so now what we need to talk about is the sarcoplasmic reticulum of the smooth muscle cell. So basically, the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which I'll denote like so, is an intracellular organelle inside the smooth muscle cell. So this is the sarcoplasmic reticulum, often denoted as just the SR, sarcoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so um, SR, I'll just denote it up here, right. 